Hi, how's it going? You know, that actually really hurts my knees. I should stop doing that. I want to talk about why now is a good time to be a physical media collector. And not in the degree of, oh, physical media is dying, now you should collect. Bye, 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 sell, sell, sell. No, I'm not into pandemonium right now. I'm pretty chill today. Uh, no, I kind of was like thinking about, because I buy uh, figurines for Creature from Black Lagoon. I adore the Creature from Black Lagoon. Um, this is my... Uh, God, I haven't done it instead of for so long, I've forgotten what the word is. Uh, you know when you have a, an experiment, and you're like, this is my topic of experiment, this is my choice. It's my example, Creature from Black Lagoon. Um, <laughs> actually, it's a good example in terms of physical media as well. I, we live in an era of buying media, and figurines, and whatever, where... I'm trying to figure out what that word is. <laughs> Where you can just kind of find anything in a way. Because of the internet, because of everything being so... A lot of things being overproduced and mass produced. That it's a lot easier to do a lot of stuff you couldn't have done 30 years ago. I wouldn't know I wasn't around. But, uh, you know, it's kind of an idea of mine that I'm like, maybe back in the past things were difficult. Um, I say it because... Over the past couple of years, I've started buying, uh, obviously, a lot of physical media, but I've started buying, specifically, Creature in Black Lagoon stuff. I love Creature in Black Lagoon. I love the creature before I ever watched the movie. Like, five years before I watched the movie, I'd seen the creature and was like, that guy looks awesome, I love it. I've seen the movie, like, three times now since, at every opportunity I could take from getting the, the Blu-ray, the Steelbook, the other Steelbook, the um, big Universal box set, the, the, the Tomb set... The, sorry, coffin set, I should say. Uh, the standard Australian Monster Blue Raid, the free pack legacy set, and then the legacy set in the big box set as well. I keep looking over the where it is, but I realize it's buried behind figurines. And then the 4K UHD. It's a great time to be a collector for that kind of movie because of the amount of physical media treatment it's gotten. And the same goes for the figurines I buy, because there are so many times where they'll have different brand deals crossed over with Trick or Treat Studios or Pop Mart or Funko or so many different things, and you can get so many different iterations of the character. And case study, that's what it is. It's a bloody case study. I knew it would come into my mind. The reason why I mention that as a case study is because because of something like the internet, the, the, the world I live in now where I can find these things easy goddamn peasy, it's become to a point where I, at the touch of my fingers I can find anything. And the reason I say this as a good physical media bonus is the fact that I found all these different versions of the creature from Black Lagoon, obviously per year of release and whatever. And I and to be fair, I could have easily saved a lot of money by only buying the single edition version of the Creature Black Lagoon, not buying the legacy set, and then buying the big ass legacy set, which I should have done a lot sooner. But it's okay, you live and you learn. I bought the laser disc as well for that movie. Something that I can't even play. I've got the VHS, which I can play, but I haven't. And uh, if I if they had a HD DVD or something like that, another media format, I would buy that too. They might be like Betamax or something, but it's like, I don't think I'm going to stoop that low. So, the reason I want to talk about this as a, why is now a good time to be a physical media collector? And I know that, I mean, it just kind of is, isn't it? Like, as much as we're in the potential decline of media is kind of dying... But not really, it's just retailers are selling less and less of it. But the prospect of getting movies on physical is reaching higher notches, like statistically and everything. Not just from basic releases of a movie that came out last year, having a Blu-ray release and a couple of months later having a 4K, or immediately having both, but then also getting a steelbook down the road or something. Or a film that came out 70, 80 years ago, getting Blu-ray, 4K, steelbook, remastered and everything. But then films that you've never heard of. And I'm not just talking about the ones from 80 years ago. I'm talking about the shit that's so under the current, so buried, that you would have no idea they even existed. There's also stuff that's like foreign language films, or stuff that isn't from America, or from Australia, or from the UK. Like, stuff that isn't majority English-speaking language, like Jalo films, and like spaghetti westerns, and like Korean cinema, and 50s and 60s Japanese cinema. The weird, the weird shit. 
you know, the nitty gritty weird stuff that you'd have like Vinegar Syndrome doing like uh, Blu-ray and 4K releases of. All that kind of stuff is insane that you can get that now. Like that you can just buy every Godzilla film on Blu-ray and DVD is remarkable. The fact that you can get them all in curated sets. All the Bruce Lee films. Bam, there you go. Arrow Video. Oh, what's that? Criterion did it a year earlier. Oh my god. Then there's also like... Umbrella had releases of those in Australia, which I probably would never have suggested to anyone, and I didn't. I would have just been like, get the Criterion, I'll get the Arrow video. You know, there's there's so many ways to get this media. You can get it remastered, you can get it repurposed, you can get it reanalyzed and everything. It's such, it's such a great era to like live in for that. Now is a great time to be a physical media collector because simply you have everything there at your fingertips. Just like me, we have wanted to collect more stuff from the Universal Monsters. The benefit for me there is uh, that you can get older stuff still. Same with how I say with like the Laserdisc and VHS. Because of the internet, you can find so much stuff. Like there's something like again, Universal Monsters, Creature from Black Lagoon. There are classic versions of those from like the seventies and eighties. You know, every five ten years, they get new printed figurines and stuff, and Bigger brands now, like Funko and Mego and stuff like that, have adopted those and have been like, hey, we're going to make a replica of that, or we're going to re make a replica of that. So you can kind of get that old, nostalgic 70s, 80s toy you used to have as a kid, but now as a display figure, or just buy two, one for display, one to play with kind of deal, you know? It's not exactly my cup of tea to buy that kind of stuff, because I don't really care for a lack of detail type of figure that's literally a, we made it cheap to sell it cheap, for higher volumes, actually to sell it high for higher volumes, get more kids to buy it, we get more money. That was obviously the original point of that stuff, stuff like, like Master of the Universe and stuff like that. But now, of course, people love that stuff. You've, you've got fans, you've got fandoms, you've got people who are nostalgic for it, people who are growing up now who are interested in that kind of stuff, and that stuff is going crazy as well. I'm not huge into buying that kind of stuff. I like my designs. Like, I like the creature for the creature to look as much like the movie as possible, you know? So I could show off, like, I've got a video I've done before that shows almost all of my creature collection because, of course, I've since gotten more stuff. But the majority of the figures there, despite from some, you know, uh, pop vinyls and Funko figures, which most of the time do look very accurate to the creature, they look accurate to the creature, you know? That's, that's my shtick, you know? I, I love... The design of the creature so much so I want things that look like it. I don't think that looks, I don't want something that looks kind of like it that's like, ah, sure, I guess. You know, if it invokes the feeling of, oh my god, it's my dude, it's my guy, that's what I want. And obviously, that's when it comes to like physical media, it's a weird juxtaposition here, but like, you know, if I want to get a film and I want the best quality film imaginable, then I can find that now. You know, something like Brotherhood of the Wolf, I recently upgraded it the other day, and I had a little bit of consulting, because it's not just a, I want the film, find the Blu-ray, bam, slam dunk, done. Sometimes, sure. But, some of these films, again, with the remasters and repackagings and bigger branding and stuff like that, have had different releases. Brotherhood of the Wolf in particular is a, you know, what, 2001 French film, maybe 2000, and... The old Australian Blu-ray is the theatrical cut. It's the easier version to get. Apparently it's a really shitty looking transfer. <sighs> Apparently an hour of bonus features, which are just like behind the scenes stuff in one long video. Um, not much to write home about. Then there's the classics remastered Australian label one there, um, which I got recently. I got it for $14, which is pretty damn good compared to like the $25 regular retail price because we've kind of got sales on. And so, I bought that, but I did do the research, and I did discover that there is a the UK equivalent, I know there's a Screen Factory one as well, which apparently is region locked. Ugh. For a 4K, bugger off. But the UK region version has the same first 4K disc that the Australian version has. It's the exact same brand, Studio Canal. And that's all we get in Australia. We just get the first disc with the 2022 scan on 4K, two commentaries and a trailer, and that's it. But the UK edition has like three more discs, including the Blu-ray version of that 4K disc, a Blu-ray special features disc, and another special features disc, which is the theatrical cut. And I'm like, that's pretty good. 
you know, I don't think the theatrical cuts being remastered. It's probably just an older print. But the fact that they're all there is really cool. You know, you get all these special features, you get all these interviews and panels and discussions and stuff. And I'm like, that's that's a really good set. I'm not going to buy it, but, <laughs> like, I have the choice. You know, I had a, hey, two for 40 30% off, I could get it for like $14, $14 to $16. Or I spend $37 for just the one film and probably never look at the special features anyway. Like, I had the choice, I decided to go with the cheaper option, I'm okay with it because I'm still getting the film with which thread this cut. I still have the old Australian Blu ray. Looks like shit though, and uh, the, the bonus features are literally just one hour long, like, video. It's stupid. But, you know, it's a disappointing feature where you have to deal with that as well. Like, as much as we have the benefits of, hey, you can get literally anything, almost literally anything, in so many different formats, with so many different remasters and different editions and different brands. You've got Arrow, you've got Criterion, you've got Scream Factory, you've got Imprint, you've got Viavision, you've got Umbrella, you've got so many Eureka 88 films, so many labels and brands. It's exceptional to look at and to know that you can just get them so easily. But then, of course, there are so many different conjunctions, like, hey, this film has that, this version's film has that, and all the different brands have competitive... Com uh, what is it? There's a website I go on called DVD Compare, which I have to go on quite often to find out what the main difference is between so many different releases of a film, as long as they have it in their system. And sometimes it could simply be a, oh, the overall picture of all of these options is a draw, because they all have the exact same transfer, same transfer, same scan, maybe this one's a 4K, but this one's a Blu-ray, but special features-wise, well, the Criterion has different ones to what Arrow has, and what Studio Canal has, and what Imprint has, and they've all got different things, different exclusive areas, and I'm like, ah, you know. So as much as it's a great time to collect, it's also a good time to put in the research, you know. You could easily just be like, I want to get the Euro, the uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Oh, look, there's a Blu-ray, five bucks. Sure, go with the old transfer. But, you know, there's a 4K UHD out now, and in Australia, it comes with the old Blu-ray disc, which means you get all the bonus features anyway. You know, maybe you're not a stickler for bonus features, maybe you're not a stickler for a good scan. Well, eBay, Amazon, all these retailers exist. It's pretty easy to get a film at a cheap price. And, you know, or you could be a real, real man and stream on your Netflixes. I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> There's no reason to try pulling people's, like, manhood down. Ha, you're not a man. You watch Netflix. Who gives a shit? If you want to watch Netflix, do whatever the hell you want. S stuff like streaming services, I'm not going to disagree that they're good or bad. They're good and they're bad. They're good because you can pay like, what, 15, 20 bucks a month and you get all this array of movies, assuming you watch it every day and get your goddamn money's worth. But, you know, no special features, not much in terms of audio options, commentary, nap, um, bit rate and stuff, you know, because of compression. Hoi, <laughs> not fun. My parents watched that uh, Killer the other day, you know, the new David Fincher film, and I'm like, good, I had suggested it to them because I knew they weren't going to go up to watch it in the cinemas in the two weeks that it was in cinemas for, which I did. And I'm watching it, I'm watching part of it while they're watching it, I'm like, man, this compression's bad. <laughs> like, they won't notice it, but I will notice it. So, again, a benefit of getting physical media. You get the flat thing. You get the straight edge. That's the movie. That's the show. Here are your special features. Here's your audio and picture options. Easy peasy. Sure, you also need a gigantic film shelf like myself, but uh, you don't have to keep buying movies like I do. I have an, a compulsive disorder where I just keep buying movies. I don't care. I love it. <laughs> Who needs drugs? I have clinical depression. No, I, I'm fine, actually. But still, I, I do buy too much stuff. But yeah, so it can be fear of missing out, a lot of FOMO going on. A lot of, oh my god, there's too many movies, I don't have enough room. These are all valid criticisms, valid complaints. Oh, this existed, but I didn't realise it, so I bought the cheaper, shittier version without knowing, or I spent too much on the product here, not knowing that I could get it cheaper there, or, you know, you've got to import stuff now, because not every single country has every single film on release. There's a lot of nitty-gritty. 
but the options still are splendorful. Splendorful? Plentiful, that's the one. I'm looking for splendid and plentiful. It's splendorful. Uh, yeah, it's great. The options that we have now are fantastic. Um, and, you know, my best suggestion is if you're interested in the film, do the research. I know a store that's local in Melbourne that sells Blu-rays and DVDs and CDs and whatever, and people will just call them and be like, hey, do you have this? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, we've got this version, but you need this region player. There's also this version available. Like, they'll do consultations, you know? So do your research. Consult people that you know about movies. Hey, I want to get this film. Do you know if it's better to get this transfer or that transfer? Is the director's cut better than the theatrical cut? Is the extended cut better than the shorter cut? Because sometimes the director's cuts lie. Um, but yeah, it's just worth doing your research, finding the stuff, because there's so much stuff. And look, sometimes I might be like, is this film on Netflix? And it might be, and it might be something I'll watch, but I can't remember the last time I watched Netflix that wasn't like Seinfeld or Friends, you know, something that's like we watch every day at dinner, you know? It's, I, I haven't watched a movie on a streaming service in a while. Um trying to think of any I did watch I did watch Netflix the other week actually because that new Scott Pilgrim show was on but that's because it's exclusive to the streaming service um same as like Scavenger's Reign which was on Binge which was exclusive to that so it's like there are stuff like that where there's stuff that's new and exclusive to certain services and whatever but like older films that I could get like the James Dean film Giant which was like a 300 minute long film or some shit it's a really long movie and I got the 4k because it's like why not so I don't have it it's not in the shelf apparently it's a really good film 4k UHD baby so yeah I don't know do what to your heart's content what you can find um, as long as it's not illegal unless you got a pirate sometimes you got a pirate that's, that's also a valid thing I've done it myself it's, it's fine I live in the country of Yahas. That's what I should do. I got a Christmas party coming up and we're doing pirate theme. I could do like a computer hacker, like a computer pirate. <laughs> oh, would that be too far? I don't know. Anyway, those in the work and they're, they're chilling. Anyway, I got movies to watch, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go. But uh, thanks for your time and uh, yeah, it's just it's a good time. To be a physical media collector. As much as everyone's all dour about, oh, this shop's closing, this shop's not doing Disney anymore, what are we gonna do? I don't know, find a better place to buy movies as well? There's uh, so many places. At least with Australia, I don't have to buy as many Disney films now, <laughs> but I do have to import them. Trickier, but I can still do it. Anyway, that's all. See you next time.